Well, hello, good evening, everybody. Welcome back, Jujitsu 2000 here today. I'm back. I've got an interesting video for you today. We're going to talk about a lone grizzly mountain season eight, episode 11. This video will contain spoilers. We're going to find out who won the show. Let me go ahead and get started. The name of this episode is The Reckoning. And the quote comes on the screen and it says, The rewards for those who persevere far exceed the pain that must precede the victory. This is a quote by Ted Engerstrom. He's a famous author. He was the head of the Youth for Christ and the World Vision international so very interesting we're gonna start on day 68 it's about two o'clock in the morning we're talking about clay there's footage from his game camera and it captures movement but you can't quite tell what the animal is there's something running around his camp so moving forward, about 8 o'clock in the morning, he knows that something was on it at his camp, or walking around. And now at this point, day 68, he's completely out of his deer meat. He's done. In fact, he finished his deer meat three days ago. So he decides that he's going to go check the gill net, and he's getting thin. He's concerned about getting pulled because of his weight. He's losing weight. He's lost 20% of his body weight since the launch. Crazy. Well, he gets down to the shore. He pulls in the gill net. Nothing in it. He's frustrated. I mean, it's fell after fell after fell, and it's not a reflection on clay. That's just the nature of the beast out there being on the game. So he's frustrated, um, and he says, I'm done with the net. I got frustrated about that. I, I, I mean, it is what it is. I thought, man, you know, don't quit, don't stop, you know, keep going. You know, it's kind of my thought process. I was hoping that he would keep going, but he said, I'm done with this net. It was tangled. You know, at this late in the game, you know, he's probably like, hell with it. So he decides that he's going to turn to other options as, you know, trying to find food. So he's lo he's talking about snares. He's talking about using his bow. So let's move forward. Uh, about 10.57 in the morning, we're talking about Teresa. It's snowing outside. And she says today is a project day. I'm going to make a broom, she said. And she said that her hands are weak. And she's kind of cutting with her knife. And she even mentions it herself that at this point, you know, her her knife skills probably aren't that good. So that raises concern. Uh, but she's doing good things. You know, she's going away from her body and stuff like that. So her, her technique from what I could see on the film, on the video, looked good. Um, so, and then it shows her broom and it looks fantastic. I mean, she made a really nice broom. So she goes outside to test this broom. So she's like sweeping and stuff outside, sweeping snow, and she gets dizzy. And she goes in her shelter and she realizes that while she was out filming, testing this broom, that her fire went out. So she decides at this point she's got to go get firewood and she sees deer tracks in the process of collecting firewood. She says, if I shoot a deer, I could probably win this, but I'm not sure if I can process it. So very interesting that statement right there. And I don't know if she means lack of having the skill, because certainly... 
I'm going to guess that she's got the skill. I'm thinking she's meaning as in dexterity in her hands, as in it's late in the game. I don't know if I have the strength. I, I think that that's what she's referring to. So let's move forward to about just short of 3 o'clock. We still have three people left. We're talking about Biko, and he's looking at ultrasound pictures of his twin girls. Very interesting. And he mentions that he wonders who's left out there and how much fight do they have left in them. He says, I'm going to go check my gill net. And he's striking out, just like everybody out there. They're striking out. They're not getting any fish. Food procurement at this time, this deep in the game, is becoming very, very difficult. Um, and he decides he wants to make his gill net better. I don't know what he quite meant by that, by setting it deeper or whatever. I don't know. But I noticed in that shot that the water was just absolutely beautiful. That is such an amazing place. The water is like Caribbean blue or something. It's crazy. So he's out there fishing by hand. Uh, it's been a while, I, I would think, since we've seen people hand fishing. But... We're getting so deep in the game that it's getting to the point where it's desperation. People are trying, and i got to give tons of credit to Biko for reverting back to a lesser skill. You know, I'm not saying, like, I mean, I guess, I guess the chances of catching a fish in a gill net is a, a technique where you don't have to employ energy and stuff like that, like hand fishing. And he says he can't walk away from this. And then we're moving forward to day 69. It's about 8 in the morning. We're three people left still. We're talking about Teresa. She's doing a little bit of laundry in her pot. So she's got like some underwear, socks, maybe a pair of pants or something like that. She's doing some laundry and she's thinking of Frito Pie. She said, I want to live in my van and travel. I didn't know that Teresa is a nomad or that has a desire for that. I think that's exceptionally cool. I, I, that's the first time that I've ever heard her speak about being a nomad or an off-gridder or you know a van dweller or something like that. I thought that was cool. Um, she's tired from doing the laundry. And that's, that's crazy. That just shows you how deep they are into this game. How much calorie loss they've had. So she wants to win the show. She says, I'm broken, I'm weak, I'm tired, and I'm not sure if I could even draw my bow back if I wanted to hunt at this point. Uh, she gets a message on the satellite phone or whatever that communication device, and it's, it's the production crew, and they were supposed to come tomorrow for a med check, but they're coming a day early. She's like, wow, I would love to win. And I think she's starting to believe that she's won because the the way she's talking is kind of like she thinks she's won the show i believe so the med checks uh they come they're checking her out and she only weighs 94 pounds she's lost 36 pounds since day one and that's exceptional Really, I mean, if you think about it, 69 days out there, 36 pounds. I lost over 12 pounds or something like that in 10 days. And I was eating every day. She's thin. She says she would be upset if she had to go home. She tells the production crew this. And then they tell her, they break the news to her. You know, unfortunately, your weight's too thin. You've lost too much, blah, blah, blah. They gave her the whole line. We're going to have to pull you for medical reasons. Wow. I was frustrated because she was doing so well. It's crazy. She cries and she does something very smart. She tells them, can I go have a minute by myself? You know, she wanted some alone time. So they said, yeah, absolutely. So she went in her shelter and I don't know what happened in there that's her private moment 
but I think she cried or screamed or whatever it was. Uh, and then she comes out and she says, I don't like crying in front of people. I'm so disappointed. And she says, I'm not upset with anyone. I'm just, you know, she didn't want to get pulled. You know, nobody goes out there and wants to get pulled. That just, unfortunately, if you can't get the food, you know, you can't feed yourself, you're going to, I mean, it's the reality that, that every participant in the history of alone faces out there. Now, I'm going to quote her real quick. And this is an amazing quote. I wrote it down word for word. It's just crazy. She says, I got the opportunity to do something that very few people do. And it was amazing. I'd love to have the $500,000. But at the same time, I've spent 69 days getting first-hand experiences. This place has become my home. This is my home. And that's one of the hardest things... I was in control of everything. Everything was mine. I had absolute control. I've never felt like that anywhere else. And now I have to hand that over. And that's tough. However, my motivation for coming on this program wasn't just to win. It was to have an experience that I have not had before to do things I've not had the opportunity to do before and I've done that and I'll continue to do that this is just the beginning wow what a powerful quote from Teresa that just blows me away so we got two people left day 69 11 13 in the morning we're talking about Biko He's in his shelter and he's got his foot up here like this and he's like warming his feet, right? He's very flexible. First thing I thought as a jiu-jitsu practitioner, he's practicing his rubber guard. <laughs> Biko's doing the rubber guard, right? Uh, and I'm joking, of course, I'm jesting here. Uh, for those of you who don't know what the rubber guard is, there was a jiu-jitsu player named Eddie Bravo, good friend of Joe Rogan, and he invented this technique called the rubber guard. Very, very fantastic technique. Tenth Planet Jiu-Jitsu is the name of his school. Absolutely stunning techniques that he developed. Just things that the jiu-jitsu world has never seen before. The rubber guard is amazing. So when I saw Biko having his foot up like that, I automatically thought rubber guard. You got to be very flexible for that. But anyway, getting back to the show, uh, that was a funny moment. 17 degrees Fahrenheit outside. You know, he was just warming his toes. And he says the plan for the day is to get food. I think that's the plan every day for everybody out there. Uh, he says, I'm going to try the underbark. He said, I worked hard all my life, uh, working my butt off, crazy jobs for little money. And he said, I even quit my job to come out here on the show. So he pulls out this inner bark off the tree and he's cooking it in his Dutch oven. And uh, he's drinking some of the broth. It's a red color. And he's talking about how nasty this stuff tastes. And uh, it can cause side effects. It can cause nausea. It can cause constipation. It can cause dizziness. All kinds of bad things that can come out of eating this bark. And then in other cases, it could be fine. So you kind of almost take a risk when you're going to get that desperate, I guess you could say, for the lack of a better description. And he said, this mill almost wants to make me tap. It's terrible. It sucks. Blah, blah, blah. So he stops eating it, which I thought was very smart. He says, I don't want to throw up. And he stops. Now we're moving forward. We're still on day 69. It's a little after 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Of course, we're talking about Clay now. He's out setting snares that morning. He said, I've never snared at home. It was illegal where I come from. He said, so it's a new experience for me. And guess what? He catches a snowshoe hare around the chest. A rabbit, right? And then he goes and checks a couple other snares, and which was very smart because he put a string of snares together. Not just one. He put multiples out, 
And that's the key when you're going to be snaring out there is multiple snares. You don't want to rely on just go, let me just set one and call it a day. No, the, the odds are in the numbers. It's in the, the num amount of snares that you set. So he goes down on his snare line and he finds another hair. He's caught two of them now. And it's to the point where things are getting desperate. So I was blown away. I was very excited for Clay. I thought that was amazing. He got a second one. He's happy. And up to this point on the show, from day one all the way till now, day 69, he's caught four snares, uh, uh, four hair out of snares out there. Four hair he's gotten. Crazy. So uh, about 7 o'clock, it's supper time, and uh, he said everyone should experience hunger at least, some, at least once in their lifetime. And I thought that was a good analogy. I thought that was very interesting that he said that. Because people, I think, I think would appreciate things a lot more if they would struggle a little bit once in a while. And I think that's the point he was trying to get to. Then he hears a noise outside. It's it's dark. It's 10.30 p.m. And it's a fisher. A fisher is a relative to a wolverine. Crazy. Same family. Moving forward to day 70. 70. 8.33 in the morning. Biko. He said, my guts are in knots today. Um, I'm going to forage for some wild onions. And he's lost. 30% of his body weight since he's been launched out there. That's 90 pounds that Biko's lost in 70 days. 90 pounds. That is crazy. So he's out there looking around, forging around. He said that the underbark was a bad decision. And he finds a whole bunch of onions, wild onions out there. And he's excited. So it shows him a little bit later, he's at his shelter again, and he's eating this onion soup, and it's fantastic, he's happy about it, and he says, I'm going to wait it out, meaning, you know, like, obviously everybody, I think, wants to go home, and he's saying, I'm going to wait it out and see what happens. So moving forward, about noon, um, day 70, we're talking about... Uh, Biko still and he says I'm not going to leave here until they pull me so now we're moving forward uh, a little bit after noon about 12.26 we're talking about Clay he's going to go check his snares he sees fisher tracks all over his trap line the, the fisher is walking up and down his trap line his snare line hoping to catch <laughs> Clay's catch and then he sees blood in the snow. He said he's mad too because he says this fisher is working my trap line. It's crazy. That pissed me off too. He sees blood in the snow and he's like, oh my gosh, how frustrating would that be? That is crazy. Then he shares a quote that's very, very interesting. And a very, very interesting quote here. He says, we trade our lives for money. We trade our lives for money. Crazy. Uh, 18 degrees Fahrenheit outside. It's about 4 o'clock or something like that. It's snowing outside. He's very frustrated. He says he knows that he's limited on time. He's thin. He says, I, can shoot I can't shoot that fisher. He thinks that it could be the reason that he goes home. Because the fisher's out there stealing his hair. He saw blood in the snow. So he's frustrated. He's like... That thing could cost me this show. Moving forward to day 71, 9 o'clock in the morning. We're talking about Biko here. He says, Happy Thanksgiving. He decides to get down, go down to the water. He's going to get some drinking water. And he kind of slips. It's icy and stuff. And then he's down there getting water and the waves are coming in. And then one of them splashes his legs a little bit. And then he says, it's getting risky even to get water. And then he slipped, you know, like I mentioned, on the way down. So he hikes back up to his shelter, and he's having heart palpitations. He's got, he says, something ain't right. I feel funny. He says, I'm weak. I'm lethargic. My body's falling apart. I'm failing. 
Um, and he says, I'm so sorry, Aaron. I gave it everything I got. And then a little time passes, and then he comes back and he says, I can go a few more days. So much respect to Biko. He dug deep. I mean, they've been digging deep, but he dug deep again. Crazy. So 11.30, talking about Clay. He said, I might shed a lot of tears today. 23 years he's been married, and this is the first Thanksgiving apart. It's crazy. They've been uh, together since he was 17 years old. He brought a family photo, and he doesn't want to be there anymore. He's looking at the photo. He's thinking about his boys. He's thinking about his wife. He's done. He doesn't want to be there anymore. Isolation. He said, it shows me just how lucky I am to have those two boys and my wife. He says, I'm ready to go home. I would die for them. So now we're thinking that Clay's going to tap. You know, the show goes to commercial or whatever. It comes back. There's a boat. It's day 73, 924 in the morning. You see the boat on the lake, dramatic music playing, and we're wondering, like, who, who quit, who got pulled, what happened, and then it shows Biko. Wow. I was shocked. Remember, Biko had his rules, and the one of his rules was don't ever hit that button. And he had enough body fat, I think, still left to keep going, but... I'm not knocking him at all. I was shocked. He's emotional. And he said a few things, but the one that I wrote down, and this is so cool, he said, the biggest win I have is waiting back home for me. That was so crazy. So crazy. So B goes out. He tapped. And I'm proud of him. You know, I, I, gotta, I can honestly say... Obviously, now we know that Clay won, and but Biko did far better than I thought he did. If you go back and you look at my prediction video, I put Biko like way down there. He he proved me wrong. You know, he he was just phenomenal on the show. Great, great, great television he brought us. His his uh, he had that little bone in his nose. I mean, his just his his personality amazing job he killed it out there so we're moving forward it's day 74 obviously we're going to be talking about clay he won the show it's a sunny day he's out there soaking in the sun getting some vitamin d exposure he doesn't know he won yet he said there's a med check today uh he said this this show out here it's a waiting game you hurry up and you wait med check he's thin it's snowing or raining. The producers, about 2 o'clock, they tell Clay, how many days do you think you got left in you? And he sits there and thinks for a minute. And he says, you know, I think I could go 90 and then probably beyond. But then he kind of says, I'm not real sure. I mean, I think he's referring to his body weight. Uh, but his mind was ready to go. And then they tell him, as it turns out, you won't have to do that. And at this point, he knows he won. So I'm waiting for his wife or his boys to come up behind him like they do all the time. Somebody always surprises the winner. You know, a family member comes out there. But for some reason, they didn't do that. I don't know what the deal was. Um, Clay says that he's thankful for everything, all the food, everything, material, everything out there. But I'm ready to see my wife and my kids. So then he goes down to the beach and they give him a phone call. So he calls his wife. He talks to his wife, tells her the news that he won the show, talks to his boys. Crazy, crazy, crazy. So congratulations to everybody. You know, Teresa did a fantastic job. Biko did a fantastic job. Clay won. So hat is off to Clay. I originally was torn between Nate and Clay. And I, I thought, if you go back at my prediction video before the show even started, 
I thought it would come down to either Clay or Nate, and I ended up thinking that Nate was going to win it all. And uh, Biko, I, I thought was going to be way down there, you know. Anyway, I'm going to read a quote from Clay, and this this is fantastic. He said, uh, man, I would have said this. He said, this is the hardest thing I've ever done, <laughs> but for reasons I can't expect. I expected it to be a physical challenge. I expected it to be a test of my skills, but it's a test of will. It's a test of fortitude and resolve. It was an emotional challenge for me. This experience changed me as a person. We grind against the reality of having to be there with not enough to eat and in total isolation from your family. That stuff exposes you. It grinds away the facade, the varnish that you put on yourself. To have gone through it and come out the other side, I feel a better person. That's the real prize because that will be with me for the rest of my life. That will be one of the most valuable things that I carry away from here. It's knowing in my bones a deeper appreciation for my family. Crazy. That is just crazy. So congratulations to Clay for winning season eight of Alone. Wow. I'm blown away. You know, it, it's just, it's crazy. That was a great season. I know there's a lot of naysayers out there and people that don't appreciate this season saying it wasn't as good. As, but for those people that are criticizing the show, go out there. Put yourself out there and see how well you do. See if you don't cry. It's just crazy. So, wow. Well, that's it for Alone. Season 8, I want to say thank you to everybody who has supported me doing these commentaries for this whole season of Alone. I'm telling you, it's a lot of work the way I'm doing them because I write notes, tons of notes down. And it, it, I hope that you guys appreciated these videos, that you enjoyed them. Hope you got some good, useful stuff out of them. As for me and getting on the show, I've been trying and trying and trying. I went public with it. I went private with it. I've tried everything I can think of to get out there and tell my story. I don't know. I'm a loner. I live alone. My dog uh, just passed away. So I'm literally alone. I'm ready. I'm ready to go. I live alone. I'm ready to go. I've been begging this these people to put me on the show and to let me have a shot. I have the skills. I have the mental fortitude. What is stopping them? I sent them an email recently. Like, put me on season 10. I'm ready to go. Season 9, I think, is already gone. But put me on 10. I'm ready to go. Season 10, your man, I'm ready. Pick me. Let's go. I'm ready to do it. I'm 46 years old. And I'm not leaving until somebody tells me to go home or if I win. That's it. I relate to Clay with a lot of stuff. And uh, Biko surprised me. So, folks, I know I'm getting a little bit long-winded. I want to say once again, thank you so much for watching these series. I hope you enjoyed it. So, until next time, have a beautiful day. We'll see you then. Bye for now.